everybody, welcome back to another episode of Infiltration. So we are now at Horde, made the jump 11 days. All our mechs are repaired and ready to go. We got one day to the financial report. We do have a bunch of C bills here, so we're okay. Um, now we picked up a Rack 5, and uh, let's have a look, look at the mech bays real quick here. So I wanna put that here um, all on, on the Hollander 2. We're gonna pull out, pull out after this first battle, we're gonna pull out the LBX, um, or sorry, the uh, yeah, the LBX AC-10 and the ammo, put in the rack five with a couple tons of ammo. We're gonna have to pull out the um, uh, SRM-6 Valiant and the ammo as well to get the uh, rack in there. But we'll be able to add a tag and stay under heat um, and be perfectly on weight. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. But first of all, we're gonna jump in and do a mission. Um, we're gonna go to the barracks and first things first, and we're gonna uh, use up some skill points. Um, so we'll get some get some more evasion, we'll plus one max evasion on Dallas here. Um, duck, we're gonna spend a point on Guts. Uh, Goofy, he's still okay. Uh, Gundal, gonna go for multi-target and confirm that. Um, Hellion, we have enough to get four on both tactics and Guts. Do we not? Wait. How? Uh, what? the heck is going on? Is that giving me... Let's do this. Let's confirm. That's weird, eh? Confirm one and confirm the other one. Why does it say three now? What the hell? I just lost points. Uh, assassin gives me what? Decreased XP for leveling gunnery, but that's it. Um, I lost points for some reason. That is really bizarre. And we're going to go with heat loss on infiltrated. That is bizarre. I can't believe we actually lost a whole stack of XP there. It's still not registering. Even though we confirmed it and it was at three guts. Or four guts, I mean. That is so weird. Well, we'll have to keep our eye on, eye on that for next time. All right, let's go to the command center. Let's jump right in and take a, a one and a half, I think. Dead or Alive's two and a half. This is an assassinate. Recovery mission at two skull. Thorn in the side. Stubborn surrender. This looks like it's a good payout. Um, it's an urban environment. Uh, yeah, let's go this route. I mean, it's a good payout. Let's negotiate. Just to ease me into the night here. Let's accept this. All right. All right, Hellion. Let's do this. Command interface initiated. All right, here we go. So our targets are up over here. Looks like they got two lances. All the more people for us to kill. and concrete all right let's get up here so the kit fox is one of the other mechs we want to re-outfit here the medium lasers are okay the tag barrage is nice it's gonna we're gonna keep that I think but we gotta re-outfit that I mean I think we really we really need to examine all of our mechs but we don't really have the gear, so we're going to focus on um, collecting gear over the next few missions. Let's get up here. I like the uh, the streak and the pulse combination on the hell spawn. Yeah. 
and this will be nice this will be a nice fire support mac with a rack 5 in it the two er mediums now i'm gonna i think i'm gonna include a tag in it um i was thought about dropping another er medium in but we wouldn't be able to use that er medium all the time because they'd be overheating um although my thought was with that er medium is that the rack jams um if the rack jams then we'd have at least three er mediums to be shooting with for a turn which is about the same as the rack firing with about four rounds and and the two er mediums all right uh goofy first um if you hear a little whistling going on in the background it sounds like sounds like a little siren that's my father-in-law's scooter it's got a little alarm on it and right now it's uh, pretty windy up here in Canada well in southern Ontario striker light tank okay we're expecting a bit of a snow like a sleet snowstorm tomorrow I was told so don't know if we're gonna get that or not but Full all right let's give them something to shoot at if they want to shoot at somebody so yeah the wind will be uh, hitting the bike and um, causing the alarm to go off kind of annoying but it is what it is. Okay. We're going to try and stick together here, I think. A Bessie? Really? From what I remember, that's the, uh, like a cattle master. The improved version of the cattle master, I think. Commander? If you want to call it improved. Okay, let's get you a little farther forward. Confirmed. Hopefully we can get those streaks and pulses in close range earlier enough. Nice. Yeah, you move over there. Oh, a couple of hits. We got our missiles coming up here in a second too. Qu'est-ce que c'est en français or Italian? Is that the Italian flag or the French? That's the Italian flag, right? French is blue. Well, it's nice to see they're engaging early for a change. The one thing they should do, um, I noticed before we, um, like once I reinstalled uh, the new version, before we got the extra leopard, we never had an extra lance that was landing with us, and that's kind of cool. But they should give us the option of having support or not in the actual mission. So when they, uh, when we've got our, when they give you the mission uh, parameters, they should say if you do it with, you know, um, an additional lance to uh, back you up. Then it's going to be this much, and if it if you do it with uh, without that, then you're going to get a little more, and give you the option to turn that off. Arctic Fox, good chance to hit. Vehicle, not so much. So it looks like it's the Arctic Fox. Um, standard. Is it the same? Twelve. Yeah, it's the same. All right, standard rounds. Ooh, okay, we stripped a lot of armor off that guy. Looks like some of them went internal too, so I think this guy's probably going to be uh, in bad shape by the time we see him. So there was a couple comments in the comment section, and uh, both of them were totally valid. Uh, one of them was about um, uh, constructing mechs, and yeah, I did, the, I think it was the last episode of the one before this, um, or two episodes ago um, I spent the last half of the uh, episode um, working on the mechs and it was like someone said it was about 45 minutes and, I, and most likely it probably was and I apologize for that usually I do my building off screen um, but because I was r basically redoing everything I thought it might be interesting for people to watch that 
if you think it's inter interesting to watch me rebuild mechs, you know, feel free to let me know. And maybe if I do, if I'm going to do that, I might do just an episode of rebuilds and then I'll do a combat episode so that people who don't want to watch the rebuilding don't have to see it. But uh, if I don't get any comments about that, I'm just going to go back to the way I normally do it, which is do all the uh, building off screen and then just show you what I've done. Because if, I mean, I didn't really, I don't, like, if I have a lot of gear, it might be interesting to see the different types of builds that can, can come out on a mech, but it, I don't really have a lot of gear, right? So it was mostly, you know, trying to make do with, with what we had, right? So um, then the other comment um, was, I'm drawing a blank now. Oh, Fist of Dawn commented about the Irby and using the, the, uh, the PPC um, cockpit. Unfortunately, we can't take that out of the Irby. It's it's built in, unfortunately. So we were stuck with um, not being able to do that. And so um, let's move into here. So it that uh, 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 command console died with the Irby, unfortunately. Okay, what else do we got here? Uzio, Uzio, whatever. Twenty-five tonner. Let's get rid of this guy. Oh, we took it all, eh? So yeah, that uh, that died with the Irby, unfortunately. Ow. It's okay, I got some swarm missiles for you guys. If he doesn't move, he's yeah, you're getting hit by swarms, baby. Yep. Where are you, Gundal? Can we we got a direct line of sight? Wow, that's really bad chances to hit. Wow, swarm even worse, eh? ECM, man. Oof. 32 on the Bessie, eh? Yep, see ya, Bessie. Looks like the Uziel might have taken some as well. Yeah, a little bit. Huh. So this green circle is around the Bessie, I think. You have order? Yeah, we need the Bessie gone. Or we could shoot on this guy. Oh, that's a really bad chance to hit. Alright, let's pull the barrage off. We're a little too close for that. Wow, that's so uncharacteristic. Oh, head hit though. Yeah. yeah. We need you up here, girl. So yeah, this mech definitely going to have that rack on it. Uh, we use the slug or do we use the cluster? Let's go cluster. Take that building down the process. <laughs> We're supposed to be protecting the city and it's like not happening. That's the Bessie meleeing? Sure. I'll tell you what. Okay, what else do we got back here? Stiletto. Scorpion. That's the striker. The grip. Arctic fox. And was there anything else? That's it, I guess, eh? Uh, I think we should probably be okay tar targeting this guy. Whoops. I should really not be using that. Warning. Armor low. <laughs> I, yeah, that's my fault. Sorry about that. Yeah, my fault. Totally my fault, guys. My fault. 
totally my fault. Feel free to use the barrage when I'm in range. Yeah, not much damage though. Not as much as that guy took though. Beautiful. Yeah, he's almost done. This guy must have, I mean, he had a fair amount of armor for 25 tons. He must have been at full armor almost. Arctic cheetah. It's a cheetah pita. Okay, we're going to strip this Bessie, finish him off. Move right on to the Uziel. At least that's the uh, that's the plan. Whether or not it happens is a completely different thing. Come on, Zoro, get somebody. Oof, nice. Come on, blow up, blow up, blow up. Nope. Oh, another head hit. Okay. Round four. Enemy turn. Probably that Uzio going first again, I guess. This guy. Two energy. Two, sorry, four energy. I guess these are tags? Oh, it's the grip moving. It's the Bessie that's generating the ECM here, I guess. Stealth. Okay. Infiltrator. He's an infiltrator. Okay, we want this guy. And firing. Whoops. Wait, what blew up? What blew up? It sounded like something exploded. I'm receiving. Oh, that's just freaky. Yeah. What can I do you for? Uh, let's get you on to the Uziel as well. Can you get up and not be seen? No, you can't. Uh, can't get a side shot on this guy either. We can from here, but then we're going to be exposed, and I don't want to be exposed, so let's move up um, to here. I'm leaving the Bessie alone. Um, I kind of want him to get up before we shoot him. It's going to be overheating. Let's see if a, uh, pulses are the, our better chance to hit. All right, firing. Okay, good damage. Reporting critical hit. Commander. Yeah, I need you to put some missiles down on this guy. Uh, can we get you up onto his side? No, I think that's a front shot. Bustin' ah! I think that's a front shot, but we'll take it. Beautiful. You got that right. Is it Bessie dead? Is that what blew up the Bessie? I guess so. Damn. take advantage of this guy's uh, impropriety here. Uh, we're going to switch over to slug ammo and do the max damage on him and we're going to warlord it because we might as well. Um, hammer him. See ya. That was an attack of opportunity. 
Okay, three down. Seven to go, five to go, five to go. Stealth, Stiletto, The Grip, Scorpion, and The Striker. Reporting. Not the best, but Let's just use our tag barrage. Hopefully we can catch a couple guys back there with a... Oh, it's only one shot. Well... We're destroying this city! <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, we didn't even get close to him. This is supposed to be a clan wolf town too. It's like, yeah, sorry about sorry about that guys. Yeah, my bad. They should make a mission where it's um the buildings are worth a certain negative point value or negative percentage value and then f once you reach a certain like each percentage is amount of the uh your sea bills earned and salvage that you'll receive at the end. That's the percentage that it goes down by. So let's say you're you're making a hundred thousand off it. Every time you uh, um, get a one percent reduction based on the building size or whatever, um, it reduces that by a th by a thousand sea bills. So if you get like fifty percent damage or fifty percent on the buildings like damage and stuff, you end up with fifty thousand sea bills instead, and you only end up with half salvage rights. So that would be kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting way to, to to play it. It would make it really difficult. Affirmative. All right, let's remove the striker if we can. Can we use this one? We can. Firing everything. Critical hit, Commander. Well, significant damage, but not enough to kill, unfortunately. Sorry, Goofy goes before him anyway. Hmm. All right, Hellion. Confirm. Uh, I'm gonna switch back to cluster and firing. Confirm. Ooh. Uh, let's remove this guy. Targeting near armor. Nicely done. Enemy unit destroyed. I'm not happy with the double large lasers on this thing, but they do fairly good pinpoint damage, so I'll take it. Not gonna say no. Yeah, let's make sure we finish this guy off. Beautiful. Reporting. Vehicle destroyed. Well, he did have an ECM. That's good it's gone. A little bit of building damage. A little bit of building damage never hurt anybody. Unless, of course, you're in the building, and then maybe it did. All right. God, the chances to hit, man, this thing. So bad. Uh, we can switch up to dead fire, though. It's not really helping, is it? Do we want the bigger damage, or do we want to go with... Let's go with bigger damage, less hits. I just apply all that damage to the building.
you know, if Clan Wolf complains about the destruction to the buildings, I'm going to say, look, there, those, you know, the guys you sent with us fired first, hit the buildings, and it was just basically, you know, saying to us that, hey, it's okay to go ahead and do that. That's all it said to me. Just said, you know what? We're fine with you guys damaging the buildings. We're doing it. I don't know if these guys are running or what they're doing, but they're certainly in a bad position. Oof, AMS did a good job. I think I want to get up in front. Hopefully they target me. Alright, firing on this guy's backside. See ya. Can you get a back shot? You can. Throttle down, moving out. Throttle down, moving out with a really lousy chance to hit. Oof, good hits though. So they're down to two. Looks like the grip's moving forward. And it's committing suicide. Here you go, moron. Inflicted some heavy damage. That you did, my friend. That you did. Location confirmed. Looks like our uh, one LRM five is jammed now, unfortunately, but. Not like it's doing a big major amount of damage. This guy's moving next. He's fleeing the interview. Come on, guys, he gave you their back. Two left. Two left, and we're, we're going to be rack five in it. Commander. Lock in Sure was. All right, now can we get behind this guy? We certainly can. Full throttle. Decided to give us your back. Oh, well, we might as well. It's not like we've cared about the city before. So I'm guessing everybody in these vehicles has fled. Like they just got out of their cars and ran. I hope they didn't run into these buildings. Alright, let's get over here. Oof. Terrible chances to hit, but we're going to fire everything. Ah, a couple hits. Chase this guy down, Goofy. Oh, man. If your intention was to collapse the building on him, it didn't work. Where did he go?
That's so Raven. Oh, there he is. Wow, 4.3%, eh? Little better. All right, let's lock on with uh, regular ammo. A little better chance to hit. And the streaks leave the barrage off. We're a little close. Yeah, not bad. Like six hits or something, so not bad. All right, what's this guy doing? Wow, you didn't move. It's got a nasty ass AMS, that's for sure. I messed the map up again and I'm extremely sorry. Yeah, it's funny, my kid said to me a long time ago, Dad, why do you like sing sentences sometimes? And I'm like, everything can be sung. Reporting. Everything can be sung. Location acknowledged. He's going down. Well, not bad. Hit with half. No, let's get a little closer. There it extra dry. Here it comes. Oh. Enemy mech destroyed. Talk about getting cored. Confirm. All right. Warlord. Yep, fire it all. Fire at, at least we hit with something. However ineffectual it was, we did hit with something. Maybe Dallas can get back over to do another hit, but unlikely. I think she's just too far away. Just gonna stand there, are you? Guys, a turkey shoot. These guys are just like not doing anything. Dead fire is back up. Uh, dead fire ammo back up. How many rounds do we have? 50? Yeah, just go this route. There we go. It's just a matter of time. Ooh. Alright, let's see what we get. All right, 144,000. Oh, the only damage that we got is pretty much from us. Um, I think we're going to forego the mech parts because we need we need parts. Well, let's see what's down here. Let's see what's down here. We got a streak clan, a clan streak six. That's not bad. ECM. Okay, fire control system Artemis 4. God, this is garbage mask. That's a possibility. Let's drop that in. Sensors tracker. Do we already have one of these? No. We're using it right now, I think. LRM Artemis ammo. That's kind of a bonus get it because it's got a bonus to hit etc 
<laughs> if we're going to go with LRMs, that's an upgrade. Now we do have streak ammo left over, right? We've got two. So I mean, we could take the streak six because we've got a streak four as well that we can we can put both of those into the uh, kit fox. Huh. Or do we stay with medium laser spam? Ah, God, I don't know. MRM 10, we do have one. Sheath beacon. It is an ECM that goes in the head. It'll save us some weight, probably. Um, 60 meter radius for ECM effects, light blue circle, jammer. UAV, UAV compartment. Now we've tried to use that before and haven't been able to get it to work. Pirate Jammer, ECM Aura. Debuffs enemies within 360 meters. <sighs> we go this route. There's not much here. The patchworks are nice. Like I recognize a lot of this other stuff. Patchworks are nice. Slick, words, slick sweets, nice. Plus one initiative for all lance mates. I mean, we could go. We could take two of these and put them in two of our mechs, but our initiatives are already pretty good. Ah. Uh, well, let's just go with what we have. Alright, Stiletto part, Arctic Fox part, Uziel part, MRM-10, Plasma Cannon, ECM, a couple of engines. Yeah, not bad. Alright. 21,000 repairs. It's going to take a little bit. We knew that was going to happen though. Four days. Okay, Hollander needs a day. Apollo needs two. Let's have a look here. Okay, so we want the Hollander up first and the Kit Fox. And then we'll do it this way. So it'll be four days exactly. Okay, so let's go this. Ready to go over financials whenever you are. Yeah, a million seems like exce seems excessive, but <sighs> whatever. Alright, mech base. Let's do this real quick here. Is that what you're calling this place now? A hole? Alright. LBX off. Here we go. Rack 5. And ammo. Uh, rotary ammo. Rack 5. 3 tons. 1, 2, 3. We got to pull this off. We got 1 ton left over. And it's either... Um, where are we here? Weapons. It's either the tag or it's another ER medium. I think the tag is probably better. Giving us a better chance to hit with the rack is always going to be better. Got the ballistic fire control system, the battle computer for initiative bonus, and the slick suite. Now we don't have an ECM on this mech, so maybe we look at... Uh, where are you here? Let's leave the weapon mount for now. Uh, where are you here? Wait, can I use this? requires a targeting computer. Okay. Um, sheath beacon. If we put that in here, it replaces the battle computer. Still the same weight, but that gives us an ECM for this mech now, which I think is probably better than the plus one initiative. 
plus two initiative for all lance mates. That's nice, but I think being protected is better. And it's not adding any weight, which is a brilliant thing. And we'll see if we can fit this in somewhere else. So let's confirm this. 10 grand, four days. Sure, sounds great. And then the kit fox. Can we improve on this guy at all? Um, see if we've got, we've got the battle. I mean, we could just drop the battle computer in. Just for now to get it to go. I mean, the, this mask would be nice too, but then we're stripping stuff off. Um, I mean, we could go with the sheath beacon instead of the Guardian ECM. That might give us some weight. UAV plus one defense. Three ECM field for everybody within range. ECM bubble jammer. Huh. This is a smaller ECM range. Well, let's just leave it as it is for now. We need more GAC, that's for sure. Okay, let's change our tasks here a bit. Bring the Hollander up to the top. Uh, I want the Apollo next. Okay, and because um, we're going to switch out, I want to get that Artemis ammo in there. So let's refit this, and maybe we can put the battle computer in as well. What do we got? Oh, uh, we can't, maybe. Increased missile range, I think is better. I think that's better. The swarm we haven't been using, so let's pull the swarm ammo out. Uh, and let's go with uh, ammo, LRM. We've got two Ar LRM Artemis? Wait a minute, we can't use it because what? requires Artemis 4 system. We got what? Artemis 3. Do we not have an Artemis 4? I thought we did. What does the battle computer replace? The sensors. Um, no, I'm incorrect. I thought we had an Artemis 4 already. I was sure we did. I thought for sure we took one. Ah, oh well. Okay, we're back in action. Um, one last thing on this guy. We have upper recoil on this already. It's plus one accuracy. What if we go... We're going to have to lose some stuff if I do this. Now, we don't have anything in the sensors. We can put the battle computer in. Let's do that. Right. I'll get it in the skin. All right. Here we go. Let's take something a little higher skull this time. Last mech standing. Raising population center bring field is ah, it's a nice idea. Brilliant minds. Um recovery, eh? Reach the facility which you station and extract her to safety. For four seventeen salvage. Let's go with this one. It's really the salvage I want, you know? All right, let's see how this rack does. Command interface initiated. All right. How about we just reach the facility, rescue her, and kill everybody? That works better for me. All right. 
do a bit of scouting. Oh. Fire starter, eh? Uh, I'm gonna leave the barrage off for this turn. As you wish. Oof. Okay, let's get up here. Maybe we spot somebody else. Nope. Let's leave that off. Okay, well one of the largest hit, that's nice. Now I, I think he's got immunity anyway, which is why it's hard to hit, but we're going to take the shots on him anyway. Except for the rack. I'm going to leave the rack off this first turn. I don't want it to jam, so let's just fire these. Here you go. Meh. He's a fire starter, twisted fire starter, with a PPC or something. My armor is peeling away. Plasma cannon. It's a lot of energy points. Well, I guess it would be because flamers are considered energy. energy. So hopefully that we get reinforcements after this. Paralarm fives. Oh, what do we got back here? Oh, Centurion. We do have Centurion parts, I believe. D3D or D3, D3O? D3D it looks like. A big fifty tons. By. Okay, little Dallas multipass. This guy has decided to move, so he is giving you Copy that, Commander. the green light to toast them. Feel free to uh, take advantage of that. Okay. Calculating the damage. Everything can be sung. Come on, let's go. Beautiful. Evening at the Apollo. What's up, Commander? With Gundal. All right. Uh, let's go with the dead fire. Kind of in the middle of chances to hit, but there's more damage. Oh. Critical hit, Commander. Not much armor left in that location. Oh, stop complaining. Oh, maybe you maybe you should be complaining. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you were hit before, though. That's where that guy hit you. Yeah, he took one point from the other, from the, uh, the barrage. Barragey. Uh-oh. Steam engines. Looks like a Centurion. Oh, Yenlo Wang. That's even worse. Oh, for shit's sake. There's a hole in my armor. Yeah. Hybrid TBM LRM carrier. Flight damage. Hold in firm. Barely hit, Commander. Okay. We got a defensive lineup. Got a quarterback with the uh, with the rack five in the back end here. Yeah, 
You know, I gotta say, I've played all kinds of sports. Reporting. Hockey was my favorite. Um, you know, I, I am Canadian, so, you know, hockey. Uh, let's not get close to that guy, though. Let's get over here. Um, Moving out. Okay, we got another Chevron. Oh, it's a Chapa. get the barrage up so yeah as I was saying I played all kinds of sports on teams as much as I'd love to clock to uh, well let's you know what let's just try and finish this guy up um, soccer was my least favorite or football for you your European uh, people uh, was my least favorite all the running um, just to give you some background about my my uh, breathing history, I had two parents that, that smoked like a pack and a half of cigarettes a day each. Um, so my breathing as a kid was pretty bad. Um, bombard, okay. Um, so any sports that required me to run, uh, yeah, were not very favorable to me. Uh, so soccer was my least, least favorite. And then football... Because I was so thin and light, was my was my next least favorite. How many can we get going here? Five, all six with forty two percent chance. Cha. All right, let's see if we can shred this guy. All right, a few good hits. Anyway, it's strange because you know you think hockey, it's it's a um, very active sport right like you're on the ice but the thing is is that you're only on the ice for a little bit and then you're off for a bit right so it's off and on off and on off and on and it, it was it's far less um, exhausting than people think it is I mean it, it is after an hour of playing and I played defense too right so it was um, which is strange because I was I'm a, I'm a very thin light guy um, should we fire on him I think we get rid of this truck. Um, but yeah, I played defense, right? So, but it's just like, you know, you're on the ice for like, you know, sometimes only 30 seconds and then you're off, right? right it just really depends. All right. Uh, I think you can finish up this Yenlo Wang. Uh, yeah. Dead fire it is. You couldn't hit the area I want, huh? Solid connection on that one. Anyway, um, yeah, so soccer my worst. Football my second worst. Um, and, uh, I was a receiver in football. So, I mean, I could, I could kind of catch okay, but the, the coach that we had used to be, uh, um, a next um, Winnipeg Blue Bomber, Bomber player and um, his son was the fullback of the team and because our team wasn't really that great pretty much all of our plays were handoff to his son and see how far we could get <laughs> so the the amount of passing that happened was like very very small oh beautiful they killed it um, yeah so like my uh, my time on the field was running a little bit, like running whatever pattern that the uh, the play did wanted, and making it look like they were, we were going to somehow pass, which we never did, right? And then it was like running the, the ball up the middle, so it was pretty sad, I gotta say. Um, then my next least favorite was baseball, and you know baseball is not you're not doing a lot of running unless you're hitting and running, right? Um, but I just hated the waiting around. I gotta say, hockey was my favorite. I pay, I played ten years. Um, definitely my favorite, only because it's like you're on and off the ice, so you're paced. And yeah, you know, after an hour of playing like that, you're exhausted. But it's not like not like not like soccer where you're constantly running, right? You know, or football. I mean, well, see, I don't know. 
like football is physically exerting for sure um, but um, you know hockey is too because I mean we, I played contact my entire life right uh, I, I started off where um, we weren't required to have a face mask on our helmet as a kid we always had to have a helmet on do we get them yeah we got them beautiful um, we were always required to wear a helmet um, but originally we never had to have a face mask it wasn't until like I think the third year I was playing hockey that they required face masks not that it matters because I mean when I lost I lost half of one of my front teeth well two years in a row the last two years I played when I had a face mask on so it didn't really matter when I had a face mask or not right the first time it was um, the uh, I went into the corner to uh, body check a guy in our, in our end and um, he took the butt end of his stick put it up into my face mask and put the other end of his stick into the boards so when I went to hit him I basically uh, he almost basically took my head off with his stick right and he did it on purpose I mean <laughs> we all did asinine things like that but he did it on purpose um, and my uh, face mask um, went straight back and it was it was my I mean my helmet never fit perfectly snug but it went back right into my like right into my teeth and I got like my my teeth like you know as I said in the past my, one of my nicknames at school was goofy I got or I have an overbite right so um, yeah that went right back into my overbite and uh, snapped off one of my front uh, one of my front teeth like basically broke it in half oops I want to go this way just go with three and yeah nice that there was a critical hit that was. but yeah even though you know I, hockey I, I guess it's just because it's got the right amount of physical of physicality to it it has you know a lot of tactics even though it looks like a bunch of guys skating around you know swinging at a puck it's it's really has a lot of tactics and strategy to it like you have to know what to do where to be all that kind of stuff right um, it just has the right combination of everything right it's and, and I find you get a little bit of that in all of the other sports um, but you you really get all of it in hockey which is why I loved it so much beautiful Then I did other stuff too. I mean, did I did curling, bowling, you know, other sports like that. Went to pool halls, played some pool, shot some darts with my parents, you know, all those other kind of sports. But really, the physical sports. Are, I got to say, well, you know, you know, and I did play a little bit of um, um, field hockey. Um, in school, I was on the basketball team for one year at the school. Um, so I, did, I did try everything but really hockey was the only thing that really got me and I, I don't know whether it's just a Canadian thing or what it is the combination of being out in the cold and being like like warm and like 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 hot from skating and just the, the cool breeze on your face like everything about it the fact that you're moving quickly with the skates the the, the coasting on ice that f there's just this freedom to it that I can't I can't I don't know you just don't get it in any other sport and I'm sure the people out there who've, who've played hockey um, know exactly what it is I'm talking about. Um, and yes, it's uh, really you need to learn how to skate first. And when I mean learn how to skate, like everyone can get on skates and kind of push themselves around. But you need to be able to be on skates like you're on your feet. You got to be so comfortable with being on ice that the moment you step on ice with your skates, like when you're walking to, with, to the ice with your skates you're like this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing and then you get on the ice and it's like yes this is what I, this is what my body knows I should be doing and for people who don't really skate that well think of it in reverse think of it as you know when you're on the ice with your skates you don't really know what you should be doing and then when you get off and take and you're walking on your regular feet um, that's what you should be doing that's kind of what it what it kind of requires to be able to, to 
to really enjoy playing hockey you have to forget about the fact that you're wearing skates um, and, and, and so that your the whole movement aspect aspect of hockey is no longer an issue and do these guys have the ability to barrage me let's take this guy out beautiful But yeah, you know, if you've played hockey, I think you'll understand what I'm saying. Even if you're like, just like, or if you're like a figure skater, you'll understand what I'm saying. You know, I got nothing but respect for figure skaters, man. Like the amount of strength and stuff that you have to have to be able to do that. It's just ridiculous. It's like, you know, um, football players, um, when they, when they, uh, uh, go take ballet training and they realize how difficult it is right it's basically it's strength training is what it is like they're, they're you know most people who are in ballet are ridiculously strong beautiful see ya but figure skaters will know what I'm talking about when they're on the ice um, What else? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else can really compare to it. I mean, figure skaters for sure. Let's go. I don't know. Maybe people who ski probably understand the same thing too. You know, when you've got your skis on, um, it just feels like it's like it's an extension of your body, right? It's like this is what I, this is what I should be doing. That's a miss. Eh, you tried. Yeah. Get that big rack up here. This one's been a walk in the park too. I want to see if I can pull those griffin legs off. So let's see if we can kill this guy. Three shots. Okay, one hit in the tag. Beautiful. I'll take it. One out of three. One out of three ain't bad. Yeah, but if you guys can think of any other sports Throw it down in the comments section. Let me know what you'd like to play. Like it's, uh, you know, I don't play anymore. But still it's weird. You, uh, you know, I put on a skates, a pair of skates after all this time. You know, and it's the moment you step on the ice, everything kind of comes back. Now, I, I, my weight is different than it used to be. So I'm completely off balance. Um, but it takes a little bit to get back into it. But once you do, it's like... You know, it's like, I know I said I wanted to like pick this guy's legs off, but I'm shooting at him hard. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. As if there's any sports that you guys play or any, like anything you do, like that you really like doing, even like riding a bike. Like I, I, I remember watching a, um, the movie Breaking Away. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. I don't remember the name of the, the main actor in it, but basically the idea of the film was this guy was um, uh, a cyclist, and he really loved cycling, and he he loved watching the Italian cycle, right? So, wait, this is the... Sorry, this is the side facing me, right? It is. Um, anyways, he loved watching the Italian cyclists, world cyclists, right? Come on, let's OP this guy. Well, let me OP him. Why not? Uh, what? Okay, there we go. That's bizarre. I had to hit tab. Oh, one hit. Um, but he liked watching the, the, the Italian cycling team. Anyway, um, so, uh, what ends up happening is, um, he uh the italian cycling team shows up and you know they're racing against the locals and he goes ahead and uh races with the team and they basically he's the only one that can keep up to them right so they get they get dirty with him and they the one guy pulls out a bat and sticks it in his spokes right and wrecks him so now he's like oh i don't I, you know i don't like the italians anymore and you know i don't want to 
I don't want to be a cyclist because he's basically ruined all his aspirations, right? Confirmed. He was trying to like snuggle up to these guys while he's racing and saying, "Hey, look at me! I can, I, you know, I like racing too." And and they basically spoke him, right? Which is like the most ridiculous thing. All right, let's burn this guy. See ya. Anyway, um. So I, I can't remember where I was going with this. Anyway, he, uh, uh, you can't reach, so you might as well go in here. Anyways, um, so, but uh, later on in the movie, you know, he, him and his buddies have a comeback, and there's a, like a local cycling team. Uh, like, him and his buddies are what they call cutters, and it's this sort of town where there's like a, um, a quarry, and their parents basically worked at their, this, this quarry, and these kids basically work at the quarry too. Uh, and then there's like the, the college campus where the college kids go to, um, and there's the the separation between the college kids and the and the cutter kids. Anyway, so long story short, it, it, there ends up being a cycling race at the end between the, the university students and the college students, um, and the cutter team. Now the cutter team is just basically this guy who's a really great cyclist, right? And uh, and his buddies that know nothing about cycling, right? Have never trained. They haven't cycled at all, right? So um, basically, you know, um, he gets injured during the race, and his, he was supposed to ride, ride the whole race, right? And his buddies weren't supposed to do anything. So uh, he ends up getting injured, um, and uh, so his other guys, his other bu uh, buddies. Um, try and make up the difference for him right by keeping the team in the race and then you know he's he's like all depressed it's like you know forget it i you know we've lost and then finally he says screw it gets back on the bike and ends up winning the race right whether you know he's injured it doesn't matter he still wins right so um but i used to love that movie because it was the underdog right um the underdog who um you know comes back in the end and wins this championship right Anyways, uh, so I remembered thinking, oh, that's the greatest thing. I got my bike, my 10-speed bike. I got to go out and ride like <laughs> like, a, like one of these cyclist guys. And I went out and I would start riding my bike and, you know, pretending like I was training, like I was one of the, like, like this guy, right? I don't know how old I was at the time, 13 or something, 14. Anyways, I remember seeing this cyclist on the road and he's just kind of slowly pedaling along right and it's one of those guys that's you know you know is a real cyclist right not like me like the pretend cyclist he, you know he's a real cyclist you know he's got the gear and the training anyways i do in my head i've got the little uh i've got the music playing from the movie right and i'm like yeah i'm gonna pass this guy and show him that the uh you know the us joe average guys it can be you know just as good or better so i pass him and i'm going and i'm going and i realize i'm getting really tired because i was like really exerting myself to be able to pass him and then about a minute later he's like he catches up to me passes me and then just leaves me in the dust and i was like so distraught i was like oh i suck man i can't do this so i kind of gave up my cycling dream there all right let's take uh I don't know how many Centurion parts we have. It's a different model. So we're going to take two of them. Now, AC-20 to... F so they had two AC-20s that they could have killed us with. Plus 50 range? Mm, we have an Ultra 20 anyway. ER medium. Clan ER large. That's a good possibility. I'm going to throw that in there. Um, light Gauss rifle. 50 damage for 12 tons though. Regular rack five tags we've got plenty of. Active probe. Calm sweet plus three increased resolve one tactics. Mm. The resolve is nice, but we're not really using it. Fire control system AC plus two accuracy with auto cannons. Minus one recoil minus ton of. Okay, let's take that. I know we've got a plus one to hit with ballistic. But the plus two and the minus one recoil would I think be a big addition to the uh, rack loadout. And I think we can pull the tag out. Well, it's minus 10% heat from AC fire. 
if we pull the tag off, we might be able to drop another ER. Well, I don't know if we need it though. ER medium. Okay, another mask. Patrick materials are nice. Prototype double heat sinks. Oh god, two of them. Oh, TSMs too. We don't really need them though right now. Oh, two rack five ammo. We don't really need the rack five ammo either. So really the prototype double heat sinks are the only thing. I wish I could see what I have in my storage. There's no way to see that, eh? I can't remember if we only have one or two Centurion parts. Because I'd love to be able to stack up on these prototype double heat sinks. Uh, plus the fact that we can get two of them here. We could leave... Ah... Uh, I think that's got to wait. I think that's got to wait. As much as I love that weapon, the chance of getting two prototype double heat sinks again like this might be very, very slim coming up. So let's take these now. I believe we still have a prototype double heat sink kit which we can use with these. So let's do this. All right, Centurion parts, which we which we knew the Griffin or the Firestar to 45 tons. Uh, Griffin, I thought Firestars were 35 or 30. Different class of fire starter? Defiance AC, ER medium, double plus flamer, a couple of engines which we can sell. Oh, we got, the, oh, we, got oh, we, we chose that, that's right. Um, double heat sink. Oh, we got the patchwork materials, nice. I think we have one of these already. Yeah, we do. So now we got two. That's something else I got to put in the max and start increasing stuff. We can put, yeah, we can get a whole ton with what we have now. So that's good. And Thunderbolt ammo, so not bad. All right. 8,000 for the repairs, which is really nothing. All right. So, uh, I am going to end this episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. What I'm going to do between episodes is I'm going to look in the mech bay. We do have a few new things. I'm going to re retweak a few things. We do have that arm mount that I want to get get into place somewhere along the way. Um, maybe on, on the uh, Kit Fox when we re-outfit it. I'll load up one arm with a bunch of stuff. Um, it might end up still being all lasers. I'm not sure yet, but we'll have to see how it goes. Um, oh, yeah. L first, before we leave, let's check to see if we do have a Centurion. Um, so storage. That's the D3D. One ballistic, two laser, three missile hard points with two support. It is compatible with the 3A. Now the Centurion 3A has got what? Primitive downgrade. Yeah, let's not go that route. <laughs> let's put this guy together for 44,000. We can do that. Sure. That mech is ready to fight, Commander. Use a mass to augment its movement, really. Same chassis and engines combination as the D3 variant. Use a mask. Like Gauss rifle, LRM 10 launcher, ER medium laser. That's kind of a nice little bit here. Let's have a look here in the bay. Because maybe we um, retire the kit flocks for now. It is only 30 tons. Looks like we're missing the arm with the Gauss rifle on it though. Yeah. 270,000 to repair it doesn't have a fusion core uh, or an engine sorry I'm just gonna briefly do this uh, I just want to see if it's worth working on so let's say we go with a 240 core 353,000 and we have seven tons left over without putting an XL core like without putting an XL engine in this thing that's 13 tons for one like, we could pull the mask 
LRM10 out. Let's say we don't put this in for now. We're still only 15 tons. But then, could go Faro, or even Heavy Faro, for that matter. Clan Endo. 20 tons. Yeah, this is probably worth it. We're going to have to make up some sea bills. 14 days. Let's confirm this and get it going. Alright, we can do something with that, I think. Alright, so I am going to end this episode here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. And you can drop any comments in the comment section down below. Until next time, we'll see you all later.